Hi, I'm a system. You're a system too. The word system basically means a collection of elements that function as a whole. There are some basic ways that a system can function, regardless of what kind of elements make it up. This is why things like tornadoes and ocean whirlpools and tiny parts of animal ears can have a similar structure. These similarities make it easier for us to understand how different kinds of systems work in life. Individual, physical connection, a single object, defined by some notable boundary, functions as a unique process, based on its own structure and history, prioritizing its own needs. Examples include a genome, book, or tricycle. Democracy, emotional connection. A small group of strongly connected individuals with shared goals choose a collective action using some form of design, craft or art, prioritizing either their own needs or the needs of someone else. Examples include families, friends, households, or small group projects. Meritocracy, intellectual connection. A large group of loosely connected individuals with shared goals choose a collective action using some form of education, politics, or science prioritizing either their own needs or the needs of others. Examples include geographical or virtual communities, guilds, organizations, religions, large group projects, technology, and infrastructure. Chaos, natural connection, universally connected individuals, all animals, vegetables, minerals, etc., which have ever existed, choose to connect and disconnect as needed, forming and dissolving all of the other, smaller scale type government systems at random, unpredictably, using entropy. In other words, using the laws of physics that generate reality. Examples include life, the universe, and everything, collectively. We can map all four of these basic kinds of governance in systems with a decision tree modelled after Pascal's triangle, where we are able to see both the individual paths as well as the different sets of paths at each level. In physics, we call these the microstates and the macrostates, which might not be very important here, but is useful to know if you want to talk to a physicist about this. The decision tree looks like this. We start by asking, why does the system exist? This is a simple definition of the way the system is unique when compared to other systems. I am different from you, and we're both different from my cat Pooh Bear, or the star Vega, simply because we're each unique in some way. Oftentimes we can answer this question simply with the name of the system. David, Pooh Bear, Vega. Then we ask, when are the system's rules from? Basically, were the rules of the system created in the past, or can the rules change in the future? Then we ask, how does the system function? Is it trying to solve a problem in a controlled, predictable way, or is it trying to find new, creative solutions to test out? Finally, we ask, where is the system acting? Is it trying to solve its own internal problems, or is it looking to help others meet their needs as well? So, democracies, be they run with well-designed or well-crafted existing rules from a book, story, formula, or other historical document, or collectively agreed upon with some creative process, only work well when the members are emotionally connected and have a shared goal that they all agree to work on as a team. 
Beyond that, we need more complex types of governance, still involving a shared goal, of course, but using a problem-solving process that's based on thoroughly testing out solutions to see how well they actually work before implementing them for the whole group, either by sticking to trusted traditional solutions, exploring unknown traditions from elsewhere, or creating entirely new solutions using well-informed research and experimentation. And, above all, all of these intentional systems need to emerge naturally through the full, collectively unintentional randomness of diverse individuals simply doing what they love, freely interacting with one another as it suits each individual's own input and output needs. Without this consensual freedom to join and leave systems at will, the larger whole eventually breaks down and fails to function as a whole, which is what we see now on our planet, especially humanity. We're not free to do what we love, interacting with one another as it suits our individual needs. Which is why even tight-knit groups like families and close friends who are emotionally tied together often fail as democracies, and why nearly all larger scale systems like communities and organizations and infrastructures and technology fail to serve the needs of those they are intended to serve. So maybe you can now see that what we really need is for our species and our planet as a whole to let the needs of individuals finally choose what sort of systems we want to be a part of instead of being born or forced into them without consent. What will it take for our species to let go of the traditional governments that have been shown to fail to serve anyone's needs for very long? I'm not sure, but I hope this little story might help.